Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Sam Zaidat. Uh, I'm a neurointerventionalist in Toledo, Ohio at Mercy Health System. Mastro One is a very important study for many good reasons in everyday practice. We need a scientific evidence to compare devices in mechanical thrombectomy. That's not always feasible. It's very costly to run a randomized trial in every question we have. And things evolve with our technology, so it's very critical to come up with technique where you can look at comparative studies without having necessarily to do a randomized trial for every question you have. For example, in the case of a stent retriever here, we have many stent retriever on the market, but it's really no comparative studies comparing stent retriever A versus stent retriever B. So Mastro won't provide us those answers until other studies and scientific uh, evidence come along. So it's a very quick and rigid and rigorous scientific way of looking at uh, clinical question in a procedural based specialties like neurointervention. The Mastro One uh, study is a meta-analysis. It's Mastro One because it's living meta-analysis. That means as more evidence becomes available, it will be included in this meta-analysis. It follows the PRISMA compliance and it follows the MOOS compliance analysis for observational studies and meta-analysis to ensure there is no bias. In this meta-analysis, we focused on the Embotrap, Trivo, and Solitaire Stent Retriever. We identified all the data that published on them. There's more than 1,500 articles uh, were identified. From those, 51 studies were included that met the criteria. No combination therapy, so the patient has to have either Embotrab alone or Trivo alone or Solitaire. If they are using Aspiration plus Stent Retriever, those patients were excluded. Also to avoid bias due to sample size and a study with less than 25 patients were excluded from the final uh, analysis of the Master One. In Mastro One, we focused on the typical outcome in ischemic stroke mechanical thrombectomy studies, which is the functional outcome, as well as the recanalization or revascularization success. So the result of the Mastro One demonstrated at the functional outcome, which most of the clinicians really pay attention to the functional outcome and disability and reducing disability on a stroke patient who undergo thrombectomy. In this analysis, what we found that when we compared the Embotrap to Trivo stent retriever in this population, we identified that Embotrap had statistically significant better clinical outcome at 90 days when it compared to the Trivo stent retriever. So the functional outcome and back to independent was higher, statistically higher in the Embotrap group versus the Trivo stent retriever. We did the same thing and we looked at the Embotrap versus Solitaire in this meta-analysis. And we identified similar pattern that the functional outcome at 90 days was statistically higher in the Embotrap group versus the Solitaire group with more patients who are independent at 90 days in the Embotrap mechanical thrombectomy ischemic stroke patient. One way to explain the difference in this functional outcome is to look at the re recanalization and reperfusion rate between those stent retriever. When we evaluated the revascularization rate, whether it's first pass reperfusion or final reperfusion rate, defined as the success ticket to B or higher, we found that there is a higher number of revascularization rate in the Embotrap versus the Trivo group. That was not a statistically different, but numerically higher in the Embotrap population. Same trend was found in the Embotrap versus Solitaire, with a higher recanalization rate at the final evaluation of the recanalization or following the first pass. Similar trend was noted with the Solitaire. However, that was also not a statistically different. When it came to the safety data in this meta-analysis, what we found that the rate of symptomatic hemorrhage was the lowest in the Embotrap group. And when it compared to the solitaire, that was statistically significant difference in the rate of symptomatic hemorrhage in the Embotrap versus the solitaire. However, there was no difference between the Embotrap and the Trivo group. Now, another safety outcome that we all look into and trying to identify if a stent retriever A or B or C affect the outcome in the angio suite is the embolization into new territory or ENT outcome. When a clot goes to a different location than where we started with, and usually that's not a favorable angiographic outcome. In that scenario, we looked at the three group, Embotrap versus Trivo and versus Solitaire in the rate of the ENT, and we found no difference between those three groups when it came to the ENT outcome.
Also further out, when we look at the mortality at 90 days, and as a safety outcome in those three stent retrieval, we found that the mortality rate was lower in favor of the embotrap over the solitaire at 90 days. There was no difference between embotrap and trevo in mortality at 90 days. To summarize the study result in this scenario where we found that uh, Embotrap performed better with a clinical outcome at 90 days and uh, more patients returned to independence at 90 days versus solitaire and trevo with less symptomatic hemorrhage than uh, solitaire and uh, lower mortality rate. In that scenario, I think you have to ask yourself why did Embotrap perform better? We already see one of the explanation in the study that the recanalization rate was uh, higher in number, although not statistically significant, but in number, there's a higher first pass reperfusion rate and there is a higher recanalization rate, which is we know that recanalization and revascularization, in particular the first pass reperfusion, translate to a functional outcome. Even though any percentage you may gain in a higher recanalization rate at the first pass or at the final result will translate to a better functional outcome. And the magnitude and the relationship, we don't understand fully how much you gain down the line. So that's one simple explanation. Of course, the study has limitation and other things that could have contributed that uh, Embotrap performed uh, better at the clinical outcome. One of the things that people may remember that in RISE 2, people were also surprised that our 90 days outcome was 67%. Uh, Almost two out of three patients regained independence in RISE 2, which is a study with independent monitor, independent evaluator. This is a study where it confirms those findings into the same trajectory and the same trend. Furthermore, when we looked at other data, for example, from Mirza et al. have looked at the recanalization rate between Embotrap and Solitaire, and they found similar trend, higher rate of recanalization in the Embotrap group. Also, a very interesting study from Grady group, Emory group, that they looked at the combination therapy, aspiration, plus stent retriever versus stent retriever alone. This is another example why those studies are very critical because it's hard to do this in a randomized fashion and do another randomized trial and another randomized trial uh, to compare combination therapy, aspiration plus stent retriever versus stent retriever alone. In this study, they didn't find any difference between a stent retriever or combination therapy. However, when they looked at the subgroup analysis, if you combined the aspiration catheters with an trap, take that subgroup alone, and the combination therapy, then the combination therapy outperformed the stent retriever alone. So this is also another signal to indicate the direction of the high recanalization with the Embotrap. Now you have to ask yourself why Embotrap in its design and physical attribute may be performing better in recanalization rate. And this result also, uh, beside the data that showed the same uh, trajectory of result, may be related to the design of the Embotrap and the foundation of where this design came from. The group uh, at Sirenovas uh, have uh, done a great job in establishing a clot research group called NTI. And this really went into the clot extensively and designed clot with a friable, a hard clot, and medium uh, uh, hardness clot. And the design and the iteration of the Embotrap was based on clot uh, research which may have led to a higher rate of uh, recanalization. Finally, you know, every study has its own limitation. And in the MASTRO one, we realize there is limitation. For example, including observational studies, but we all know in thrombectomy and uh, interventional stroke studies, many studies are observational and they have good values and they have moved the field forward. So we included some of those studies, but applied rigorous inclusion and exclusion criteria. The second thing one may argue is the heterogeneity in our meta-analysis. We applied the outlier and influencer analysis to try to reduce the heterogeneity. For example, when we looked at the ENT outcome, three studies were identified that suffer from this limitation being outlier or influencer. When we eliminated those three studies, our heterogeneity improved and reduced by 30% versus not removing them. So we did try to improve on the heterogeneity of our meta-analysis by applying uh, this methodology. Finally, people may argue that 
BGC or the use of IPTPA more common in the Embotrab and may have influenced the outcome that we saw as a result of this meta-analysis in Embotrab group. However, we could not eliminate those studies because, for example, we could not really do a subgroup analysis because those uh, results were not reported separately. For example, the BGC, we didn't find the hemorrhage rate or the mortality or the functional outcome separate or recanalization. So we couldn't do a sensitivity analysis by performing a subgroup uh, study on those patients with IBTPA, for example, or BGC. So and overall, I, we believe we did everything possible in methodology to make sure our analysis is sound up to the level of the data uh, that we included in our meta-analysis. So what MASTRO 1 brings to the table? What does it really tell us? What's the story you know, that we want to get out of this MASTRO 1 meta-analysis? It's the first step toward creating an evidence-based decision-making uh, when there is no randomized clinical trial. Uh, I'm sure in the next few years we may see more randomized head-to-head -head research comparing device A versus device B, but for the current time we are in, I think applying methodology like Master One to help us on our daily practice is key for all of us. In this case, it really optimized the decision-making, the clinical decision-making, what to go for in the middle of the night when you are encountering a patient. So the take-home message is we need more of those studies to put all the data together to come up with some sort of a decision-making tool for us to help us making the decision in the middle of the night. Again, we are awaiting more randomized trial, more definitive evidence, but it's not always available, and it takes time to establish such evidence. Meanwhile, we can use those methods like Master One to come up with the decision making tools. Also, what we really think unique about Master One is a living statement, meaning that in, in 12 to 24 months, we will update the data, we'll update the result based on availability of literature and research out there and come up with, it could be the same decision, it could be different decision making. Again, this is a tool, it's a dynamic tool that we will use in the future for our patient and our clinical decision making.